Hi guys! Today's video is sponsored by Seed and Seed makes a daily symbiotic which is a combination of a prebiotic and a probiotic. I'm really excited to be working with them because they are a company who's really into the human body and science They've actually just released an album on Spotify called Never On Mute which showcases the sounds of the human body in a really cool and beautiful way. So I'll be playing some snippets of that as I talk about their daily symbiotic. So when you first sign up for Seed, they send you your starter package in really sustainable packaging and it comes with a 30-day supply of capsules in a really beautiful glass container along with a glass travel case and since it is a monthly subscription service they also send you your monthly refills in more sustainable packaging which I love and you simply add your new symbiotics to your existing glass jar. So I've been taking this symbiotic for about a month now and I'm already seeing the differences in my skin, in my overall health. It has a lot of systemic benefits beyond just digestive health such as gut barrier integrity, cardiovascular health, you might be wondering what is in each capsule and in it are 24 strain broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic formulated for digestive health, gut immunity, and additional systemic benefits. So I don't think you guys can see on camera but inside there is a second capsule inside this first large one and that is so the live probiotics will actually make it to the end of the small intestine for delivery into the colon. So I'm actually so excited to be working with this company and trying their product because of their commitment to sustainability, to science, and also just the very real effects I've been feeling from taking their symbiotic on my gut, on my skin, just a lot of systemic benefits, and I'm just really impressed. So if you've been enjoying listening to the songs that I've been playing, you can go check out their album Never On Mute in my description. I'll leave a link below. And also, if you want to try their daily symbiotic, you can go to seed.com, and I'll also leave a link in the description. So once again, thank you so much, Seed for sponsoring today's video. I'm really excited by your company and by your product and I hope everybody watching this will go check it out. Especially if you've been looking for a probiotic to try. Okay guys, let's get right to the video. Hello! You must be here for the mezcal and tequila tasting. Great, I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. And your name is? Great, okay. Well, go ahead and have a seat. I'll be the one kind of walking you through our process and how tequila and mezcal is made and also giving you a few free samples. So once you're all settled in, we can kind of get started, okay? Great. Okay. How did you hear about us? Okay. Cool. Our Facebook group? Yeah. So part of your package today will come with a free shot glass. And also, I've picked out my current four favorites right now. So. Of course, we can adjust as needed if you really don't like the direction we're going, but I think that you'll like these four I've selected. Okay, great. So 
So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, your experience with tequila and mezcal? You've had some bad experiences. <laughs> I think we all have. Um, no, but like, do you know what kind you like or even how it's made? The difference between tequila and mezcal? Okay, so you don't know too much. That's great for me. I love talking about mezcal and tequila. They're my favorite liquors. So we can go ahead and do some tasting soon to see what flavors you like. But before that, we can have a short little history lesson and just learn all about it. So if you're comfortable, let's go ahead and get started. So I have here a picture of an agave plant and a mescalero. A mescalero is a man who harvests agave and turns it into tequila and mezcal. If you've ever been to Mexico or to the southern United States, you've probably seen these plants all over. There are hundreds and hundreds of types of agave, and that is the main difference between tequila and mezcal. So what I mean by that is that tequila is always mezcal, but mezcal is not always tequila. Essentially, tequila is a type of mezcal. Tequila has to be made with a blue agave which is a type of agave and specifically it needs to be created in Jalisco, Mexico. So it's similar to, you might have heard that real champagne is made in Champagne, France and bourbon is supposed to be made in the United States. It's like that. The region is pretty important when it comes to identifying a lot of different types of liquor. There's another small difference between tequila and mezcal, which I'll talk about later, and that's in the processing part of it. But the main takeaway is that tequila is made from blue agave in Jalisco. Now mezcal can be made with many different types of agaves. I actually have three here with me made from different types of agaves. Around 80 to 90 percent of them though are made from esparin agave. And strangely enough, all the three that we have here today are not made with that. So you're getting a bit of a unorthodox tasting, but think that you'll really enjoy all of them. So, let's talk about how mezcal is made. So when you have an agave plant, once it's reached the age that you'd like to harvest it, which is different depending on what type of mezcal or tequila you want to make. A bunch of different factors. Sometimes up to 25 years or more. Or sometimes just seven. But I digress. The process is the mezcalero or his farm workers will chop off the spines right here of the agave with a machete. They'll hack them off, leaving a base called the heart of the agave. And in Spanish, in Mexico, they're called piñas, which is pineapple, because they look a lot like a pineapple once all the leaves are chopped away. So they'll take these piñas and they'll put them in an underground pit lined with rocks, cover it with 
mud and sticks basically creating an underground oven I don't know if you've ever had barbacoa before but it's a Mexican style barbecue or way of roasting meat and it's very similar so for mezcal the hearts will be roasted for up to three days which is why mezcal has a really smoky flavor however tequila because it's much more modernized can be cooked above ground and it loses a lot of that smokiness I'm sure you've tasted all kinds of tequilas and noticed that there isn't a lot of variation relatively it's nothing compared to the variation in mezcal which some are extremely smoky and have a very interesting flavor array and some are more like tequila it really depends on the type of agave how long you roast it things like that so once it is roasted it will be mashed up and water will be added and then it will be distilled and turned into mezcal All right, so I bet you're excited to get into the tastings. Let's go ahead and do that. So I thought we could start with our one tequila today, which is Hijos de Villa. This is a tequila plata. It is artisanal and it was created in Jalisco so we know it is authentic I really love the bottle of this one so you like tequila plata, right? Plata meaning silver. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, let's see how you feel about this one. So I have two shot glasses, one of which you will be able to take home with you. One is green and has a cactus inside of it. And you can see the pink prickly pear fruits on it. And the other is blue with the agave inside. So which one do you want? The blue? going to pour you a little shot you'll notice there are oranges and limes and salt for you to garnish but I recommend just drinking it slowly trying to pick out the flavors I know that's not that common to do with tequila in the States but you'll really notice a lot of things you normally miss when you take it as a shot
so what do you think? It's good? Great. Yeah, I personally really love this tequila. And I do tend to go for silver as well. So I'm glad you like that. This was pretty standard as far as tequila goes. With the mezcal, we'll get a little more adventurous, so... And we'll learn a little bit more about the families and the ranches that create the mezcal, because mezcal is still pretty artisanal. It's normally small batch. There's even many types of mezcal in which the agaves are wild grown. They can't be farmed. There hasn't been much success in farming them and so they are harvested from the wild. So mezcal is a lot more complicated, you could say. Yeah. Well, as soon as you're ready, we can go ahead and try one. If you need any water or anything, I can get you that. You're okay? Okay, great. Well, um, you said that you haven't really had mezcal before, but you do like smoky flavors, is that correct? Okay, well then I'm glad because we have quite a few mezcals on the smokier side. It is an intense flavor for somebody who is not used to smoky liquors, but it's one that I love a lot, and I guess we're here to find out if you also like them. So let's start with one of my favorites. It's in this really beautiful flask. And all of our mezcals and tequila are straight from Mexico. You can see the description written in Spanish. There's actually a lot of mezcal that you can actually not get in the U.S. that are only sold in Mexico. So, this one is called Lágrimas de Dolores. And this is mezcal joven, which is the more common way to make mezcal, it's not aged. Aged is known as añejo. But today we're going to be trying all hoven. Once you start aging it, it will turn a gold color. The longer it's aged in the barrel, it will get darker and darker. But that takes away from the complexities of the agave themselves you start tasting more of the barrel and it's really influenced. So we're going to be trying only Hoven today. The cool thing about this mezcal is that the person who owns it or is in charge of its creation is a woman. So she's a mezcalera and she has a degree in biotechnology and biochemistry. So a very smart lady is the head of this artisanal mezcal. I'm going to let you take a, take a whiff and just tell me what you think. Pretty smoky, but smells good. Great. Well, now that we've had the tequila, I'll show you how to drink mezcal. Instead of a shot glass, we are going to be using a shell.
this ring made of bamboo or wicker is for the shot glass to rest on on the table. I call it a shot glass, but you are not supposed to drink mezcal as a shot. But this nut or shell is how it's traditionally drinking. The nut gives a very small amount of flavor to the mezcal. The name of this nut is Ikara. And as you can see, artisans often decorate it. This is two foxes. And it's really beautiful. You can find a lot of different kinds of hikara, carved mezcal cups. There's also orange slices, like I mentioned. You can take a bite of the orange in between mezcals if you like. And it is traditionally served with worm salt, which is chili and ground up worms if you were brave enough to try that. Alright, let's pour you some mezcal. So, here you go. So before you drink, let me remind you that you are not supposed to take it as a shot. You'll want to take a deep breath and then take a small sip, hold it in your mouth for just a second, and then swallow. And that way you can get the full amount of flavors in every sip. So while you're sipping on that, let me tell you just a little bit more about this. It comes from Durango, in the north of Mexico. And it is artisanal, so it's made by a family. It's made from the Durangensis. <laughs> it's a little harder to pronounce. Or Ceniso, agave. Once again, it is not espadín. And something really cool about this mezcalera and the family she's working with is that they have a goal of replanting an agave for every agave they use to harvest. So there's a net um, zero effect, if that makes sense. And they have a goal of planting over 50,000 agaves, I believe, every year. And like I said, the flask is really beautiful. I do have one more flask behind me here that we will be trying. I don't know about you, but I really reuse just about every pretty glass bottle that I can, so... So what do you think of the mezcal? Are you noting the smokiness? you'll notice the subtle herbal aroma. Great. Okay. Well, when you're ready, we can go ahead and try the next. But you would say you liked it? Excellent, because the next has a similar profile, but I think I prefer the next even more than this one. It has so much going on in every sip. Mezcal is one of the only liquors that I can sip on, just because it's so interesting. Okay. So this one, like I mentioned, is in another flask-style bottle. This one is normally not sold in the U.S. 
for a couple of reasons. It is made with the Sierra Negra agave. So due to over harvesting, because this is a wild agave, it's become very hard to find and in an effort to preserve it, they've halted a lot of the harvesting of it. So this is a bit on the harder side to find, a bit on the more expensive side. Once again, it is hoven, which means young. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but the name of the company is Rey Campero. again, I love the bottle and it does make me a little sad that not just this company but various companies over harvested the wild agave. It's really interesting that some agave cannot be raised in a farm. It complicates things in terms of any kind of large-scale production. So, like I've mentioned, most mezcal is small batch. So let's go ahead and try this. So I'm going to take your cup back. you notice the kind of woody flavor from the nut or the shell? I believe it's actually a fruit, so I shouldn't be calling it a nut. He did. It's a pleasant flavor though, right? Great. So here we go. You know what those little cups remind me of though? If you've had sake before, which is a Japanese rice liquor, it's also served in really small cups and I'm pretty sure intended for slow sipping as well. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of that. So once again, as you sip on that, let me talk a little bit more about this mezcal. So despite being called the agave itself is not young. It took about 25 years for this agave to reach maturity in order to be turned into mezcal. This mezcal comes from Oaxaca, which is very famous for its mezcal. also famous for its mole and its art and tapestries. It's a very cool state and city. This one comes from the southern highlands of Oaxaca, which is a state in Mexico. And of course, it comes from another family ranch who has been making mezcals for generations and generations, which is something I think is super cool. With tequila, you don't often get that small batch, family-run kind of business as often, but with mezcal, that is very common, I would say, with maybe the exception of Del Maguey, which is a very famous and prolific brand of mezcal, and it's also extremely delicious. <laughs> okay. So in this mezcal, you might note a little bit of a molasses flavor or brown sugar, along with that classic smokiness. You 
do. Excellent. Okay, well if you're finished, let's go ahead and try the third and final mezcal, should you choose to, because this mezcal is not for the faint of heart, it's a bit more adventurous, and that's because that it has a worm in it. So if you're feeling adventurous and you would like to try it, just know that this is an extremely common way to have mezcal. Some would say it's traditional. However, Mezcal actually didn't start having the worm in the bottle until the 40s or 50s. And I'll explain that. But first, let me note that it is not actually a worm. It is a moth larva of a moth that is said to live in the agaves and around them. So the story goes that mescalero accidentally had a worm throughout the process, had a worm in his bottle by the end of it, and noted that the flavor of the mezcal was actually greatly enhanced. And so he began marketing it with the worm. You will see a lot of old cowboy westerns, including a cowboy taking a shot of mezcal with the worm in it. I know you're probably thinking that it will taste gross, but I can vouch that I also was very hesitant to try it, but, you know, trying to be more adventurous, I did just try it one day, and it makes it a little bit more salty, which once again sounds kind of gross, but it's really subtle and it's completely sanitary. And I think it does change the flavor of the mezcal. I wouldn't say it makes it better. That's up to you to decide. But, you know, you could always buy a bottle of this and whip it out at a party and see who's brave enough to try. So the name of this mezcal, once again, it is artisanal, but the brand is El Rey Zapoteco, and it is made with agave angustifolia. It is unopened, so you'll be the first lucky person for this bottle. What else about this? Abocado con gusano. Gusano is warm. And I can read you a bit in Spanish, if you'd like, from the back. Let's move this sticker. Okay, here we go. Una de las fábricas de mezcal que todavía conserva sus instalaciones en forma artesanal. Además, se ha distinguido por utilizar mague. Agave únicamente de sus propias plantas plantaciones lo que permite well you get the gist I'm learning Spanish I'm not quite fluent in that so I don't want to try to translate that for you and totally slaughter it but this is a very prolific mezcal maker in Mexico they are a bit more tourist Aimed, you'll find this brand in a lot of 
more touristy areas, so if you're curious. Alright, are you feeling brave enough to try it? Excellent. So I'll take your cup back. Here we are. Go ahead and smell it. Tell me what you think. Yeah, you can't quite tell that there's a worm in it, so here you go. Alright, so go ahead and take a very slow taste and tell me what you think. Okay, see, yeah, so you don't notice it as much. If you can get past the mental block, it's a really Kind of cool experience now. I felt the, the same way when I first went to Mexico at bars. A lot of the time they serve crickets just fried in some chili and lime and you just eat crickets as a bar snack alongside peanuts and I make it a point to try as much as I can in countries when I'm visiting and so even though I really um, felt squeamish I tried them, the crickets, and they're delicious they're, uh, they are hard to get past the fact you're chewing on a bug but, you know, I'm still working on getting used to them but I think they're really tasty now though uh, they don't quite beat out like a good potato chip I'm really proud of you for trying. A lot of people chicken out, so good job. Which um, mezcal or tequila? We only had one tequila. Which liquor was your favorite today? This one. That's also my favorite. I'm glad you liked it. We have very similar taste, it seems. Great. Well, we can take you on a tour of our facility if you'd like. We do have the clay pit oven in the back and also where we grind the roasted piñas. We still actually use a horse that pulls the grindstone in a circle and grinds it as the horse walks around. It's hard to explain, but we'll see it soon, okay? for joining me today. I'm so happy you heard about us. If you want to, go ahead and share this experience with your friends. Since we're new, we're trying to get the word out there, which is why we were doing this promotion in the first place, but you have your tequila glass and we can go ahead and take this tour. And also just for my own personal improvement, any feedback, you can go ahead and leave a comment on Facebook or something and we'll always try to improve to make these experiences better. 